Um, so first of all, thank you very much everybody for joining the uh, initial and first briefing webinar for the Made Smarter Technology Accelerator. Uh, my name is Nick Bright. Uh, I work for Digital Catal and I'm the Head of Manufacturing Industries. Uh, we're really delighted uh, to have you all on this uh, briefing webinar for the Made Smarter Technology Accelerator. Um, it's a really, really exciting program that will run over the next uh, year uh, for both industrial end users and technology innovators alike. Uh, just a couple of bits of housekeeping for this session. Um, it is being recorded. Uh, and the second part is there'll be an opportunity to answer questions at the end of the session with our panelists. Um, so please get your questions into the box and uh, the meeting facilitators will sort out those questions for the panelists. Uh, another quick thing to note is that we've noticed from the registrations that there's an awful lot of interest from the technology innovator community and a lot of different questions from the technology innovator community about this program. Now this session is really uh, designed and the, the intended audience is for our industrial partners or potential industrial partners and potential tech sponsors. Um, so there will be an opportunity later in the programme, a funded opportunity for technology innovators to get involved and we'll be doing a briefing webinar specifically for uh, that audience in December. Uh, obviously we're really happy that you can all make it today but we might not be able to get to everybody's question um, in today's session, um, but we'll make sure we take a note down of all the different bits and pieces uh, that you've got for us and make sure we address those at the webinars for uh, the technology and innovators later in the program. So we'll just quickly go through the agenda for today and the lineup that we've got. Um, so I'm really delighted to be able to welcome uh, Jürgen Meyer, who is not only the chair of Digital Catapult, but really importantly, is co-chair of the UK's Made Smarter program and has been instrumental in uh, helping develop this program and all of the different trenches that we see across innovation, across skills, across adoption and leadership. Uh, and Jürgen's just going to give us um, a quick introduction about uh, the real opportunity for digital in manufacturing. Um, then just to support that lineup, we've got Chris Courtney, who is the challenge director for the Manufacturing Made Smarter program uh, and especially the innovation part. And he's going to talk to us about all the different activities that are going on um, as part of the Industrial Strategy Challenge Fund program. And then last not but not least, we have Justin Cross, who's from Digital Catapult and is our innovation partner who's leading the uh, Made Smarter Technology Accelerator. And he's going to tell you all about how you can get involved with this program. And then at the end, we'll do a Q&A and uh, I'll return to join Chris and Jürgen and answer a few of the questions that the audience have got. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Jürgen and uh, welcome to the program, Jürgen. Thank you very much, uh, Nick, for that for that introduction, and uh, also my welcome to to everybody who is is joining this webinar. Um, and I've got to say, for me, it's a particularly exciting uh, moment. This because um, you know the whole idea behind Made Smarter was born a long time ago, um, and uh, to be in the here and now, and now being part of uh, the launch of a. Uh, made Smarter Technology Accelerator. Um, I think as you'll hear later, it is the, the largest ever um, UK technology accelerator that we've launched in the space of manufacturing in the UK. Uh, so to be, to see Made Smarter happening uh, in, uh, in such a practical way and on the ground is, is really superb. So it's a, it's a pleasure to, uh, to be with you all today at this, uh, at this launch. Um, I mean, maybe just going back a few years, the whole journey of Made Smarter, <clears throat> it started a good four years ago, um, uh, probably longer actually, but about four years ago, about 200 companies came together and, uh, and contributed and uh, provided evidence to the Made Smarter review. Um, worth reminding us of what the objective was. The objective was very simple that we wanted to make sure that in this fourth industrial revolution, which is happening globally, that Britain carves out a very strong place within it um, to be a global leader. Um, and uh, um, we then 
categorized it into a few key areas of where we really need to focus. And, uh, and those areas are that we need to get much better at creation um, of the digital technologies that we need to uh, use in uh, manufacturing. So here it might be the creation of uh, robotics OEMs or additive manufacturing OEMs, or it could be software platforms that support uh, manufacturing simulation um, or digital twinning, uh, or uh, it could be technologies such as uh, augmented reality. So a whole host, of course, of uh, technologies that can be created and invented. So that was point number one. Point number two was that those technologies that we create, and indeed technologies that we can uh, uh, we can use that are being developed in other countries around the world, we need to get much smarter at both integrating those together and at adopting them within uh, within manufacturing uh, environments. Um, and then point three uh, was that we need to uh, we need to show much stronger leadership uh, for these activities and we need to try and create a sort of a movement a national movement um, that is going to help bring all of this together and uh, and, and we feel that slowly uh, manufacturing made smarter is becoming that movement uh, that is the british fourth industrial revolution and of course, why are we doing it all? Well, we're doing it all because we want to create stronger British manufacturing. We want that business to be able to, those businesses to be able to export more. Um, and of course, um, we want to create more jobs uh, in, uh, in those businesses. We want to create more jobs, both in the tech startup uh, community and in the manufacturers who are adopting uh, the, uh, the technology. Um, now, the good news is, is, is that in the UK, um, we are rather excellent uh, at creating new technologies. So if you look at our uh, tech startup scene in the UK, in some of the areas that I mentioned earlier, uh, whether that's in machine learning, uh, uh, whether that's in uh, artificial intelligence, so particularly in some of the more software areas, the UK really is world, it is world beating. Um, and certainly within the EU, uh, there are more tech startups uh, starting every day, every week, every month uh, than there are in any other uh, European country, which includes Germany. So it's nice to be able to say that uh, um, there is definitely an area where the UK is world beating and brilliant. Um, where we are not so good is at taking those technologies and being the early adopters of them within our manufacturing uh, operations. Um, and we're also not that brilliant um, at the integration um, of the various technologies uh, into uh, manufacturing. One of the examples that's used very often here is the number of robots that we have deployed in British manufacturing. And I'm sure you've heard the statistics before. In the UK, it's around 32 uh, robots employed per 10,000 employees uh, in, uh, in, in, in various industries. In Germany, that same number is 170. But of course, it's not as simple uh, as just uh, using a robot within an industrial application. That robot has uh, to be integrated into, uh, into a whole technology uh, landscape of uh, software, of other manufacturing processes. Um, and of course, um, there has to be um, all sorts of um, early stage uh, uh, development and uh, research done to make sure that the uh, robot is going to be able to be best implemented. So, and that whole area of integration and adoption, uh, we really aren't so brilliant at. In the Made Smarter review, we actually identified um, that less than 20% of British manufacturers, it was way less than 20 actually, but I think it's probably risen a little bit since then, feel that they really are adopting these sorts of advanced digital technologies uh, that we're talking about here in the uh, Made Smarter program. So we need, to, uh, we need to do much more about integration uh, and, uh, and, uh, and adoption. And the great news is, is that that is what the Made Smarter Technology Accelerator is all about. It's creating that connectivity between the, the creators, the innovators, the, the, the new tech startup companies, of course, also maturer uh, technology companies, um, and working 
through various competitions, and all of this will get explained to you uh, later on of how it's going to work, but uh, basically we can make it easier uh, for people to come together um, and innovate, experiment, um, and, uh, and, and adopt and integrate a lot more of the technology uh, that, uh, that, is, that is available. And again, why do we want to do it? Because of course, the sort of the, the clue is in the title, it is about acceleration. Uh, we want to accelerate uh, the rate at which digital tech uh, is implemented in, uh, in, in manufacturing. And uh, why do we, uh, we need to do that? Um, well, um, we need to build on, on what we're good at. Um, so I've already said we are very strong at the, uh, the sort of creating the technology. Um, we, are, we are less good uh, at, uh, at adopting it. Uh, so uh, in other words, um, we need to do a lot more uh, of the sort of thing that we are talking about here. So it really is brilliant uh, that you've all come on board today. Nick has made the point that uh, this is more about the industrial companies that we're, uh, we're addressing this webinar at today. But in the end, it is a coming together um, of industrial partners, of uh, uh, mature uh, innovation, uh, digital technology companies and the uh, startup community and, uh, and bringing uh, all of that uh, together. Um, what is my hope um, that comes um, out of uh, the uh, the Made Smarter Technology Accelerator program? Um, well, it's uh, a that we create a much stronger ecosystem, and that these um, competitions that get launched really bring that ecosystem of the various players I just described together, uh, and to work harder at the creation and the adoption uh, of uh, of the uh, digital uh, technology. And ultimately, my hope is is that. Um, all of uh, the manufacturers um, on this call and of course the thousands that aren't on this call move to invest much more because that's that's what we need to do we need to invest significantly more in uh, the uh, the digital technologies that are used within our factories up and uh, down uh, the country and of course if we're going to invest in the technology um, we also need to invest in the skills um, and uh, there are increasingly good programs around where uh, uh, people can upskill themselves on the many digital technology areas. <clears throat> and I think all manufacturers up and down the country have got to work much harder, quite frankly, at investing in the skills in their people and at investing uh, in, uh, in, the, uh, in the technology. And uh, my final plea uh, to, uh, to, to all of you is that um, to show leadership. Uh, for this. Um, of course, um, we want support from government. Um, I'm pleased to say that the Made Smarter Technology Accelerator program is funded uh, with money uh, from uh, UK Research and Innovation. You'll hear more about that from Chris Courtney uh, uh, in a moment. But at the end of the day, that only works if we all co-invest uh, uh, together. Um, so, uh, um, and so there's a, uh, so there's a big call uh, for manufacturers to really, really show leadership in terms of investing in what we're doing here, help create a strong movement at the end of the day, create a much more vibrant fourth industrial revolution here in our British manufacturing. So uh, with that uh, introduction, um, I'm really looking forward uh, to, uh, uh, to the discussion that follows. But first, I think we're going to uh, uh, have a bit more uh, of um, a presentation on actually what the programs are all about, starting uh, with Chris Courtney, uh, who uh, is, uh, as has already been introduced, the uh, challenge director uh, for uh, Made Smarter. Thank you very much, everybody, for listening. Thank you very much, Jürgen. Uh, fascinating to hear, and um, like you mentioned, we'd, uh, it's great that we've got Chris with us today, who's the Challenge Director of Manufacturing Made Smarter, and is going to specifically talk to us today about the innovation programme, the innovation aspect uh, within the Made Smarter movement. So uh, over to you, Chris. Thanks, Nick, uh, and thanks, Jürgen, for those uh, brilliant introductory words. Uh, and thanks to all of you for attending. So what I'll do is just give a little bit of a flavour of the overall innovation programme uh, within Made Smarter, give you everybody indication of what's happening and where this piece of work fits into it. 
and how you can engage not just in this accelerator but future accelerators and other measures that we'll take. Just waiting for the slides to change. Give me a second. Justin, can you maybe move the slide along? It's not seeming to be working, but I drive it. There we go. Thank you. Yeah, so a little bit of background, maybe just to add a little bit to, to what Jürgen said by way of overview of uh, the maids mortar backdrop. Um, the, the, the phrase I've pulled up in the yellow in the middle uh, is, is one that I, I like a lot, and so I use it in quite a lot of the presentations. And I think if we think forward to the manufacturing sector that we want to have in 2030, um, Jürgen touched on many of these things about us being a global industrial leader in the creation and ex um, exporting of some of these technologies and shaping how the world does business. Um, this challenge is obviously focused on the innovation uh, and research agenda part of that. And maybe just to give you a sense of scope and scale, uh, we say airspace, automotive, pharmaceutical, food and others. It's really a fully cross-sector approach. So if you, you make it or move it, really in the UK is the way I would describe it, or, or you're the technology provider supporting them, then, then it's within scope. It's really about the core manufacturing and supply chain processes and how we can transform those using the technologies. Technologies that were highlighted in the report, the five major ones are there. So AI, um, robotics and automation, additive manufacturing, IoT, AR, VR, but there are others that you can include within that. So it's not an exclusive list in that sense. But we, we launched the program originally around innovation themes that include smart factory, connected supply chains, and make and test, and flexible manufacturing. Um, but I guess the way of describing it is this challenge is really going to be uh, one of the ways we can define and underpin how we make and deliver products and services. And it will also enable what we make going forward in the future. So as we move forward and there's uh, bigger investment programs on the design side, then these things need to be very complementary. But digital technologies, the systems we use, the machines that we use and so on, really do have a massive impact on, on, on that kind of how we do things across all sectors. So the program is conceived as a fully cross-sector program. It recognizes that lots of the opportunities and issues are common across all of these sectors. And quite a lot of the programs that we run, as I'll show in a second, are designed to be for the cross-sector. Um, the government investment, which was only recently announced, but it was actually secured in June, is 147 million. That gets matched by industry, so in round numbers, it's a 300 million pound total challenge. It runs until March 2025. So whilst we have made a start, um, and I can highlight some of that, it, it's still fairly early days in the challenge, and I'm delighted that we've got this accelerator to, to launch. Next one, please, Justin. Thanks. Um, so I think that, that what we're trying to do is sort of harness the, the power of these technologies to create a different manufacturing sector as well as the technology sector that un, underpins it. Productivity was, was a major part of that. So really trying to look forward to this manufacturing sector of the future. Can we make it leading on productivity rather than lagging as we are in some cases, but also to drive environmental performance where that's efficient use of resources, reduction in carbon footprint, but increasingly resilience. I think just about everybody will have experienced issues of huge disruptions, whether in some cases a spike in demand or um, a big drop in demand or shift into different sectors. So creating opportunities for uh, manufacturing business in the UK to become more resilient is hugely important. I think the manufacturing sector, if, if we have get this transformation right, can also lead in the creation and development of products and services of the future. If you think about you know, all the products, the new products and the net zero agenda and, and other things that are happening, Clearly having a, a really robust, um, highly productive, uh, fully integrated manufacturing supply chain is going to be a big, big part of that if we are successful in growing manufacturing within the UK uh, and I say also bringing those products to the market um, quicker than anybody else can. Creating a, a higher sense of interconnection and sort of dynamism in the manufacturing supply chain. So very few manufacturers have a full end-to-end -end view, for example, of the suppliers and their supply chains. And in these times of disruption, that's become increasingly apparent uh, as to why the people might need that. So they can either manage risk appropriately or be dynamic in terms of who that supply network is. So creating a much more connected, much more dynamic supply chain, particularly in the UK, but supporting the global businesses who are based in the UK to do that on a global basis. For us, in terms of 
how we want to try and do that. We want to create a sort of end-to-end -end sort of ecosystem. So it looks at the early stage research and the large scale industrial applications and research programs and the accelerators as part of that. They create a, a complete ecosystem so you can go on this sort of journey from start to finish or a line of sight from, from idea through to real application of some of these technologies and to accelerate how we do that. So to make sure we can get that from bright idea to into uh, reality, digital or physical, um, out into the market to create solutions, to create new products and say that from a digital side to export those solutions across the world and to really grow some, some global leaders in this space. If you add up all those things that, that are potentially possible with the new technologies, with the manufacturing capabilities we do have and the people that we have in this country, then there's a massive potential to transform manufacturing, but also the nature of the work within it. To grow jobs, to grow um, the skills and capabilities of people doing that work and so on. It's, it's an enormous opportunity for us in the UK and I'm, I'm delighted that we managed to get the funding to launch the programme. Next one, please. Um, I've drawn this picture twice. Uh, it's more a limitation of my graphic design capability than anything else. Um, the, the yellow bits in the middle really are the, on the left hand side of this bit, of this programme. So we, we have and have announced um, a full call for research centres, which are university led multidisciplinary research centres focusing primarily on smart factory connected supply chain and so on. Um, and they are looking for industry sponsors. So much like this activity where there's a really strong engagement from industry, uh, those research centres are, are launched. Paul went out uh, a week or so ago, the expression of interest um, was, went out over the summer. The accelerators, this is the first in the series of those, so this isn't the only investment we'll make as part of the programme. We'll have more to say on innovation hubs and the model for those within about a month's time or so. And then there's the, the classic uh, commercial research and development or collaborative research development programmes where we really try and build together that ecosystem again of industrial players, technology providers and so on, and to try and uh, develop technologies. All of those things can be exploded at any stage and adopted. So the ad wider adoption program that uh, Jürgen and others are working with, there are many routes to it. For us, we also have some enabling uh, research into adoption, ethical issues, social issues, and so on, um, legal issues, policy issues that underpin all of the different measures that we'll take. And we need a new, potentially a new set of standards around this space, particularly as we think forward into the future, not just from a sort of te technical point of view, but um, from a work point of view. What this program doesn't do is the very, very core technology developments of very early stage, very futuristic stuff. We're really trying to apply and develop technologies, more of a applied research type program. I, I drew it on the left hand side as a sort of line of sight type thing, but it's not quite sequential. The critical thing we're trying to get right in the design of everything we're, we're putting in place here is that connectivity and the, the integration. So we want to see small technology providers, large technology providers, large industry players, small industry players, academics and others really come together in each of these different environments to really create those next generation solutions and to create a sort of effective ecosystem that can really drive forward the innovation in this space and ultimately transform our manufacturing. Next one. So the last one uh, for me is really just to say that it has been a rather an exciting six months or so. We got tre Treasury approval for the funding actually happened just before the summer. We had the full announcement from the Secretary of State on 11th of September. Um, and at that time, we had actually launched some previous projects. So there are some CRMD projects which we then were able to make public and people can find the information about those. But really over the summer period, quite a, a lot has happened. So we've launched the initial phase of some of the standards work. So one of the underpinning bars on the previous slide, we launched a call for digital supply chain, a CRMD competition that closes next week. I, I can say that there's an enormous number of applications already for that. I hope all of those get completed and we'll have a really, um, really interesting opportunity to, to go through some of those. So strong demand, strong appetite, which, uh, you know, is, is positive sign because, you know, the world's going through some difficult times. We recognize some sectors have got some affordability challenges, but, but the appetite and interest for this particular area of supply chain and generally to invest in our manufacturing and supply chain signs are positive so far. So again, Really encouraging news. Well, uh, we'll know more next next Wednesday when the competition closes. Uh, we've also launched the, the research centres, which are multidisciplinary, multi-centre uh, setups. We had an expression of interest that we launched in July. We had 44 applicants came across the enormous uh, range of technologies, approaches, industries, locations. 
a brilliant set of proposals. Uh, we then released the, the last or the full call, so it's the more detailed uh, spec, and that closes in December. Again, there's an opportunity for industry and other players to get involved in supporting some of those. They're university led, um, but there's a, a requirement again to get involved with, with uh, industry and the technology providers too. Uh, we've also done, launched uh, some work from the ESRC, so that's more to do with the, the ethical policy, economic factors that might underpin and accelerate us towards this transformation. We launched that literally just yesterday. Um, and the innovation hubs that I, I, I can't say very much about other than that we have a plan, uh, and we'll be going public with that early in November in terms of what the, the outline plan for that is and what those look like. So as we look forward, not only is there um, more accelerators to come, and this accelerator alone, which is quite exciting, there's a further round of CR&D planned around the factory side, um, and we also are building up an international program so we can support technology providers and our industry to go and further their work to try and grow the exports, grow the international uh, collaboration and research programs where appropriate, and to really um, establish our global leadership in this space. Um, and maybe just a, a final comment on, on this accelerator. I would say that uh, if I look at the, the investment we make in the program, there are other lines as you can see above which are bigger. This is hugely, hugely important, um, particularly at this time. I know it's challenging for some small technology companies in terms of investment, um, challenging for some of their, their end user customers. It's really important that we, we support this. We're really keen to do that. We hope that um, we get a really strong interest from, and support from, from industry and they take advantage of the really good opportunity to work with leading edge innovators, technology innovators to really help drive your business forward and help to grow theirs. Um, with, this is the first in the series. And we're really looking forward to, to seeing how this program goes and I say happy to take any questions at the end. Thank you. you very much, Chris. Yeah, a great insight. And it's really, really exciting to see the full breadth of um, activities and funding uh, that's going into the Made Smarter program. Um, so uh, finally, on to uh, Justin, who's an innovation partner at Digital Catapult, and he's going to talk to you about um, an overview of the uh, Made Smarter Technology Accelerator and uh, how to get involved. So go ahead, Justin. Thank you very much, uh, Nick, and good afternoon, everyone. So, yep, as Nick said, my name's Justin Cross, and I'm an innovation partner here at Digital Catapult. Over the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the Made Smarter Technology Accelerator, and importantly, give you the detail on how you can participate and some of the benefits you'll be looking to gain. Um, you've just heard from Jürgen and Chris, and I think it's fair to say we are all operating in uncertain times at the moment. Thomas Friedman referred to this as the era as the age, uh, of the age of acceleration. And what he refers to there is there are three powerful forces, um, three powerful forces are accelerating exponentially and they are technology, globalization and climate change. But in response, we're excited to be launching, uh, I think Jürgen uh, mentioned it first, but the largest and most ambitious manufacturing focused UK acceleration program, that's the Made Smarter Technology Accelerator. For those of you who are experiencing difficulty driving change and transformation in your business or you've been left disappointed by unfocused you know, PR heavy uh, innovation activities, what we're bringing you is the opportunity to join a unique and practical industry led program, a match funded accelerator that will develop novel products and services to address your needs. So at a high level, Digital Catapult are facilitating a 12 month program. We're going to be addressing eight impactful challenges set by the industry and we're going to be focusing on five key made smarter defined themes. So it's match funded by UKRI through the Industrial Strategy Challenge Fund and part of the National Made Smarter Movement. The Accelerator will welcome 20 successful innovators to work side by side with the industry sponsors over a funded three month prototyping phase. After a rigorous selection criteria, three of those successful prototypes will then go on to receive further funding and mentorship to build a minimum viable product. The programme will innovate across five uh, themes to deliver impact for, for the industry and yourselves. So the first being intelligent factory and site management and control. We're also going to be looking at intelligent product verification and validation. Third is transparent and data driven procurement. Then there's digitally enabled factory and site workforce. And finally, we're going to be focusing on resource measurement and analytics. Now this uh, technology accelerator is designed for impact and what we've done here is look at some of the biggest challenges that we see the manufacturing industry facing at the moment 
And some of the impacts we're looking to sort of uh, like, uh, address during this accelerator can range from building trusted and resilient supply chains to lowering waste without compromising on quality and improving productivity and building a more sustainable business landscape. We will be focusing on four key technology areas that you see here on this slide. Uh, and these are gonna be giving you hands-on experiences with the likes of future networks and digital infrastructure. So encompassing 5G, IoT, edge devices, and wearable technology. All of these uh, can allow for high quality data accessibility to enable asset tracking and claim integrity. We're gonna be looking at immersive technologies. So your virtual reality, augmented reality, cross reality, and haptics which all have the potential to transform the way we experience data to enable the zero burden new surface adoption and also better training capability. AI and machine learning, which can underpin natural language processing, machine vision and deep learning, which can give real time mega process optimization or insight analysis and prediction capability. And finally, distributed ledger systems. So blockchains, for example, which can unlock new value streams and business models with the ability to securely share data at scale. The timeline has been designed really to allow for maximum engagement without impacting on the heart of the program, which is the actual building of the prototypes and the MVP development. So it's been mentioned right now, our focus is on confirming and onboarding the industry challenge owners. Um, when these organizations are confirmed, we will run a number of targeted challenge framing workshops, bringing together the key stakeholders from each organization, along with key members of UKRI and Digital Catapult. And what we're gonna be looking to do is navigate that fine line between manufacturing needs, but also of technology potential. So these workshops will look to uncover the individual and bespoke challenges for the open call, which we're going to launch in December. We will promote that call uh, for the innovators across all steering group channels and their networks, as well as leveraging our innovator network and conducting targeted scouting. When the open call is closed mid-January, we will enter a robust judging process for all relevant applicants. So after careful evaluation from the steering group and digital catapult technologists, 20 successful applicants will be welcomed onto the accelerator aligned with their industry sponsors and begin their prototype, uh, prototyping in March 21. A prototype presentation will take place in June uh, for all the Made Smarter Technology Accelerator members. And after careful selection, three successful prototypes will enter the minimum viable product build in July, with the entire program culminating in an ind industry showcase at the end of November next year. So why join us and, and like, how can you make a difference? So this is a unique opportunity. It's one to join a first of its kind national match funded accelerator, a program that's been tailored for you and your industry. So as I said at the beginning, changes in technology, globalization and climate change are speeding up. And this is your opportunity to be at the forefront, collaborating with like-minded businesses to transform the manufacturing industry and lead the charge for the UK. This really is your chance to drive that made smarter mission forward and get invaluable experience of working to, with tomorrow's technologies today. There are a number of ways to get involved in the Made Smarter Technology Accelerator, and we're seeking eight industry challenge owners as tier one industrial sponsors. You can see from this table that all of the industrial sponsor tiers are fully involved in the program. And we wanted this uh, to be as broad as it can be. Reason being so we can ensure that the, all the products and services that are developed both in the prototyping phase and, but, and also the, uh, the minimum viable product phase have the best opportunity to deliver value across multiple businesses. This is why we've added the further two tiers and we will also be inviting key technology sponsors onto the program to give advice, mentorship, and also access to the latest systems and platforms. The eight industrial challenge owners will be involved in every key stage of the program, from setting the initial challenges, advising on the cohort selection alongside the steering group, and mentoring the innovators during the prototype development phase. Then there's the all important decision of which of those three innovators will go on to receive the further funding and build those minimum viable products. Each industry challenge owner will have two prototypes developed in response to their submitted challenges, as well as access to a further four cross industry builds. Industry engagement is key to the success of this accelerator and to developing those scalable innovations which will impact the UK manufacturing landscape as a whole. Really, we're looking for ambitious manufacturing organisations who face real world issues. Ones that are impacting their supply chain or their logistics or disrupting production processes or hindering their innovation strategies, for example. With a match funded fixed cash contribution of 40,000 pounds for the duration of the program, the industry challenge owners will collectively form a steering group of UKRI and, and Digital Catapult to set those strategic direction of the accelerator, influence the technology areas, and importantly, putting forward their personal business challenges for the innovation community to solve. 
They also have that important vote on what applications succeed for the initial cohort, and they will also closely follow the prototype development and agree on the most impactful solutions to progress to MVP development. This level of industrial sponsor gives you direct access to those advanced technology innovators working on solutions for your businesses. Building products and services which look to drive impact such as lowering organisational operating costs or improving customer service or reducing waste and energy consumption, for example. You will also be provided with business cases detailing projected ROI on digital technologies to help influence key decisions around scaling a post-programme. Um, post Another key benefit for this tier is the first mover advantage on both the bespoke and the cross-industry prototypes and minimum viable products. Being able to deploy these solutions to unlock new commercial opportunities and partnerships. And not to mention the knowledge and insight gained which can be integrated back into your organisations. Attendee members will gain benefit from unrestricted access to the 20 successful innovation teams as well. So, but they will also be invited to key programme events from ideation through to product development uh, with opportunities to network with like-minded businesses looking to drive the Made Smarter mission. From a match-funded fixed £15,000 cash contribution, you will learn about the key industry challenges set by the steering group and how they are being solved by advanced technologies. You know, this will bring new insights, learnings and fresh thinking back to your own organisations to inform strategies and also solve similar challenges you may face. Attendee members will also have the opportunity to input the strategic direction for the second programme iteration and have their branding present in all the relevant marketing and partner banks. We also have the opportunity for SME members to benefit from the programme for a match funded fixed fee of £2,000. Now, small to medium enterprises are defined by the European Commission as organisations with less than 250 employees with an annual turnover of up to 50 million euros and a balance sheet of no more than 43 million euros. This industry sponsored tier will also benefit from observing how challenges can be solved by the UK innovation community uh, and they'll also be able to liaise with other like minded businesses and those ambitious agile innovators. For our tech sponsors, a match funded cash contribution of £50,000 will secure strategic positioning as a made smarter technology accelerator supplier. Tech sponsors are crucial to the transformation of the UK manufacturing industries and will receive benefits which include unlocking new market opportunities, educating both sponsors and participants during the events and dedicated workshops, as well as premium branding, visibility and press release inclusion. Now our mission intent is it's nothing short of wanting to inspire the new industrial revolution and support the vision of making the UK a global industrial leader by 2030 creating and exporting advanced digital technologies to shape how the world does business. And our first step on this journey is launching the Made Smarter Technology Accelerator, the largest and most ambitious manufacturing focused UK programme to date. To be part of this revolution and drive the Made Smarter mission, join us and your fellow businesses by collaborating with the best innovators in the UK. However, time is short for us to capitalise on this opportunity and interest is already at a high. So if you believe together we can solve some of the most pressing challenges facing the UK manufacturing industry today, and demonstrate how advanced technologies can positively impact your business and others, then make sure you get in touch with us after this uh, webinar at madesmartertech at digicatapult.org.uk. So thank you so much for your attention. Uh, we now have a little time for some of your submitted questions. So we just need to check the Q&A box. P please feel free to bring them coming in. I'll just hand over to Nick while I stop sharing the screen. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much, Justin. And uh, I hope everyone can see what um, like an incredible program and opportunity this is both for for the industrial end users and also for technology innovators looking to solve those challenges um so we'll uh please get all of your questions in now while there's uh we've got chris and jürgen uh, and myself that can help uh, answer them um but perhaps justin have you got any that you want to kind of kick us off with yeah i guess um i've got uh couple in my back pocket that would be good to, to address but um, I guess first up so one of the questions that uh, I feel that some of the uh, people watching might be interested to hear is like do the industrial challenge owners when they join the program do they need to have the predefined challenges already to bring? Uh, so I suppose I should take that one uh, first um, uh, the short answer is no they don't um, the, the program, we've got these five themes that you spoke about, Justin, the intelligent and connected factory and site, um, the work on product verification, uh, on procurement, on remote workers, uh, and those sort of technology areas and themes are uh, areas that we want the challenge owners to have interest in. Um, 
but the the team the innovation team at digital catapult have got expertise uh, over the last five years of working with industrial partners to properly define a challenge uh, so that it's suitable to be addressed by some of the startup community so um, companies can come in with a pretty broad idea of uh, what they might want to achieve or what they, what they might want to get out of the program um, and then we'll be able to work with them to define those challenges in the period of sort of November to December before we send out the open call so it's very much part of the program and we don't need people to have a clear vision for what they exactly want to do we can really help them shape that okay thanks nick um i guess one a question um that's going to be on a lot of people's minds is like how this program how's it going to work and support businesses recover from recent challenges in covid19 you know, how's that going to be addressed yeah, well i'll pick up the first thread and maybe chris can have a view as well but i mean uh we absolutely recognise that there's some enormous challenges that industry face at the moment and you know you see them with things like the fact that we've got this webinar today and perhaps in a, in a previous era we'd all be you know around an event or all together uh, discussing this in person and that kind of remote working and connectivity is a huge challenge for industry today and you know some of the themes that we've tried to bring up about you know creating a more digitally enabled workforce There's, that's a key part around remote working and, and, and trying to address address some of the challenges that people have today uh, also things like remote factory control like how, how do companies start setting up the systems and what do they look like what are the technologies needed um, so i think some of those themes themselves directly address some of the challenges that we're seeing from covid um, and then i also think some of the, the funding that ukri have managed to put into this delivers like enormous value there really isn't a program like this around there and um the uh the funding is enabling these sort of startups to develop prototypes and, and really prove out how they work and not just the the technology but most importantly the business value and the return on investment and i think that's absolutely key to not just uh, recovering and surviving through the crisis but also starting to thrive and come out the other side yeah, maybe can I, maybe just add a couple of points there. I think that the first thing, uh, probably your last point, Nick, the, the digitalization or the impact of it is is hugely significant for companies trying to operate now in a kind of remote or distant working kind of way. So there's obviously an importance for that. There's lots of evidence that it will help with the recovery and of those organisations, and there's lots of evidence that it will help with the resilience. So that it's become it's a really interesting time where we know there's lots of industries who are really struggling, um, but the level of appetite that we have seen for innovation and digital in particular is enormous. Um, so there's huge opportunities for that. The, the other piece of information which I've seen more recently is, is the, the um, difficulty very small cup technology companies are having with gaining investment. So we, we're pleased that we can support those that bit of the community directly. It's obviously always been a really important part of our overall plan. But in terms of timing, it, it's, it's important that we can we can do that um, in those difficult times and do what we can to, to help those companies that thrive in those difficult times, as well as, um, you know, boost the, the productivity and ability to carry on uh, working in a recovery and then resilient um, fashion for the manufacturers. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's an important part of that. You know, I wish we could have done it faster. We've got here as fast as we possibly can. Um, and we certainly would like to do more of it. And that's that's where I would see it fitting in. Brilliant. Thanks, Chris. Um, actually, question question coming maybe a little bit aside, but it's good, good to get out. Is uh, approximately when is the next Smart Factory CR and Z call? That's a question that's coming for you, Chris. So. July, then June or July next year. We were looking at doing it a little bit earlier if we can. Um, if you could see the detail underneath all of the other things that we're doing, we have an enormous amount of things that are happening in the first quarter of next year to really get things properly landed and launched. That we can pull it forward and do it a little bit earlier, we will. But at the minute, the plan is we do it in June, July. That'll be when we would launch the, the competition. So similar to when we launched the supply chain one in July this year, roughly about the same time zone for um, next year. Um, okay. So 
just a question come here about um, someone who's working for a number of manufacturers would love to know more about the program but might have missed this webinar where can we direct them so I'll, I'll take that one just to say we're, the, the, uh, this is being recorded as Nick mentioned at the beginning and we will be putting this up online on the Digital Catapult YouTube channel but there's also we have a website that's live that's made smarter tech um, at uh, .co.uk so please go to that and you'll see all the information uh, about how to get involved so Definitely, or email us on that on that email that I sent. Um, see if we've got any other questions coming in just quickly. Um, there's a question here for you, Jürgen, if, if, if you fa fancy answering this. So um, it says, you spoke about the lack of skills to support companies explore and exploit these new technologies. And the question is, how do you see the SME tech companies being able to engage in this emerging market? It's quite a, quite a broad question. Yeah. I think the SME, you missed the SI, I think system, oh, integrate, yeah. Yeah, system integrators, I think is, uh, is what, what the question is about. Um, I mean, I mean two, two thoughts uh, on, on that. Um, so, I mean, the first thought is, is, you know, I do think, you know, every company in manufacturing, whether they're SMEs uh, or larger companies, are going to have to get their head around uh, better training uh, and skills for their, uh, for their employees. Um, Made Smarter is working in partnership with um, Ingenuity, uh, the skills company, and there is a platform out there called Engage. Um, so uh, you can just go on to madesmarter.uk and on there you'll see a link to uh, the Engage platform and that's been populated with some really good skills uh, uh, for people to, to develop in the space of many of the technologies we're talking about here. Uh, but absolutely, I mean, directly to your question, um, you know, when it gets to, uh, to, to the, the deep skills of integrating uh, robotic systems or uh, uh, data platforms within manufacturing, I see that uh, system integrators uh, play a huge role uh, in that. And I encourage uh, uh, technology system integration companies to get involved both with this uh, made smarter Te technology accelerator program and also with the adoption program uh, the adoption program is currently still a pilot in the west we're hoping to be able to ro roll that out nationally and again if you go on to made smarter uk um, there is there is ways in which you can sort of register your interest also as uh, as uh, system integration companies can I just add uh, one comment to that? I, I think I just want to emphasize, at least from my point of view, the importance of the point that Jürgen made around the integration piece. The proposition or the hypothesis behind a lot of the innovation program we have is that um, value doesn't come by focusing around technology types. So in none of the things that we will do, will you see it's not an AI for manufacturing program or an IoT for manufacturing program. We have oriented it around factory use cases and supply chain use cases because we think the fusion the integration of those technologies is where you get the value so it's more orientated around that so it therefore means to Jürgen's point that um, efficient low cost and, and effective ways of integrating these things is just as important as the, the sort of core bit of it you know that's really where, where end users will get the value is the integration of these technologies so the integration piece is, is part of the adoption challenge as well as the innovation piece for sure Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Jürgen. Um, we've got a question here, um, which is, uh, I'll, I'll just actually ask it rather than trying to summarise it. So, uh, digitalisation can be a significant step for many businesses, let alone the SME community. Uh, would it be possible to share, stroke, provide guidance with interested parties on how to define their own digital strategy, required skills and resources, and how to lead that as a change management process? Uh, Nick, do you want to grab that one? Um, so I think it's a, a little bit uh, broad, perhaps, for the Made Smarter Technology Accelerator, um, because it's, uh, it's addressing some really fundamental points. But um, I guess it kind of goes back to the adoption program that um, both Chris and Jürgen have just mentioned as a first step. Uh, so they have, uh, through the adoption program, something we call Industrial Digital Technology Advisors, who are people that have got expertise with all of the different kinds of uh, technologies that are available, but also the, the different kinds of ways that you implement them. Uh, so how you go about bringing these technologies into your business and change management is absolutely a key part of that. I think that sort of links into some of the skills uh, that Jürgen was talking about. Um, and I don't think we're ever going to see the, the sort of change management piece go away. I mean, Chris, is there, is there anything that I'm missing that's 
sort of upcoming around the, the wider, like how do I do it? How do I de develop the strategy? I would just, uh, just to add, just give me one. Oh, we just had one of those BBC moments in the background. Um, yeah, I think the clues in what I said previously, we, we um, you know, we think, uh, from my personal experience, the place to start is what are you trying to do, sort of think about your business strategy and where you're trying to get it to, rather than to focus around what the technology or digital strategy is. Hence, we have focused our, our interventions around the, the factory and the supply chain use case. So having a view in mind as to work, what you're trying to get to, what you're trying to do, is, is a better place to start than a sort of digital strategy, per se. There's lots of guidance as to how best to do that, but I would say begin with that in mind is the is the right place to start, um, and then things become easier to to conceive of why you're doing it. Uh, I've had lots of experience in my past. People asking me about what should I do about blankety blank a certain technology type, and I think that's in general terms it's not the right the right place to start. So start with the problem or the ambition in mind, uh, and work out how you might get there. I think is um, the only thing I would add, and that's say that's inherent in the design that we've taken around the innovation program. Yeah, good advice. Um, someone want to say something or shall I ask another question? Oh, I'll go for another question. So uh, question here, like I've got, so what happens at the end of the program? You know, is it, is it going to be a second iteration? Will it happen next year? Uh, I, I can, maybe I can tell you about the, 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 the very end of this program, this bit of it, uh, that we have got, um, more money um, planned for these types of interventions for sure. We really want to see this this work and this be really effective and generate some great solutions and uh, and sort of enable some of the transformation we're talking about. And we'd like to do more of it. So that there will be there will be more in the pipeline for sure. Yeah, and I think if I could just add to that, Justin, uh, um, you know, one of the key outputs as part of this program is we're, we're not just demonstrating technology for technology's sake here. It's really about business value, return on investment, and ultimately impact. And by building that case through the program, through the prototypes, through the minimum viable products, we've, we've got something demonstrable for businesses to go and invest. So, you know, we can start companies off on their journey here towards uh, with innovation and towards adoption. So that they're starting to build up the confidence, they're starting to build up the knowledge of the return on investment, and they know that as they make investments following this program, they they stand a really good chance of being successful. So I think that from you know what we see in the long term is um, more companies using some of the innovator community to provide them with digital solutions and those digital solutions to be really really impactful in terms of uh, like supporting UK manufacturing. Thanks, Nick. Um, there's one more question in the chat, uh, and then maybe we'll, we'll draw it to a close because we're, we're coming up to the end of the hour. Uh, but this, this, I'll take this one. It's, it's a question asking about if a startup has a new software. Could they pitch the ideas to companies, see if it's a challenge the company would like to take on? Um, this program is uh, challenge-led, so it's industry challenge-led, so it's not really the forum for a, a kind of I guess a straightforward cold pitch with regards to a technology that a startup might have. But depending on how the challenge framing workshops, which I mentioned in the piece that I, that I talked through, what comes out of that with regards to the bespoke, but also the, the broader industry challenges, it may be that that startup X, their product or service might be relevant for one of those eight potential well, um, challenges that are coming through the actual program. So it's, I guess the point I want to make is it's industry challenge led, not an open pitch um, program. There will be an opportunity in Digital Manufacturing Week, the Emerging Tech Show. If people watch out for that, if you go on to do the Googling of Made Smarter Emerging Tech Show, um, which is in November, to do something similar to that. So more information will come. Yeah. So if it's in that style of things, then there might be another opportunity for that. Yeah, I believe that's on November the 13th, I think, is the, is the date for that. Yeah, the week of the 9th, so all of that week, so yeah. yeah okay, think, well, no more so questions. I just kind of wanted, uh, thought it would be worth... Um, just capturing Jürgen's view on this to someone in terms of the that uh, chat, like having something that's challenge led and ultimately having industry lead it. The what is the importance really of having industry sort of lead us in the direction of uh, the adoption of digital rather than the other way around? It's absolutely critical. <laughs> uh, a bit of a probably a bit of a leading question there, uh, uh, Nick. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, trying to solve real live. 
uh, uh, issues and challenges that are on the shop floors of our industrial companies is what this is all about. And, and I actually think, you know, and we did this a lot when I was at Siemens, we did this a lot in our own internal factories. So we did our own little sort of hackathons on getting people together to, ho to, to help solve uh, uh, challenges with, uh, with new technologies. And, uh, and, and I think it, it really gives everybody a purpose and a focus uh, and it brings people, really brings people together and creates a buzz and enjoyment. And, uh, and especially if you then put a bit of speed behind it, which is, I think, what we're planning to do here with this accelerator as well, then it really brings the innovators uh, together with the industrialists and, uh, and we get great outcomes. So, yeah, I look forward to, to really hearing some of the brilliant stories that this program develops. Okay, great. Thank you. So uh, with that, I think we'll, uh, we'll draw our session to a close um so first of all i'd like to thank uh thank you all uh for attending the session and especially thank our panelists so jürgen and chris and justin thank you very much for your time and for your presentations today um as a reminder for everybody else uh the website is now live it's made smarter tech.uk so please go there for all of your information uh, we'll be dropping further news so there's things like uh, frequently asked questions a list of those on there there's more information about the call for startups later in the year um, we'll put the recording and a link to the recording for this webinar up on the madesmartertech.uk website um, as well as the the slides that have been presented today uh, and for anything else, uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us at the Digital Catapult team or Chris at UKRI team. And uh, we'll hopefully see you again soon along uh, on the Made Smarter Technology Accelerator. Thank you very much.